I've just parked $9 million worth of scaffolding around $300 million worth of plane, and amazingly, nothing got broken or exploded. Now I can find out about the extreme maintenance that's required to keep this huge beast airworthy. The outer shell needs to be super strong, but also super light. That makes it vulnerable to fatigue. And Technical Sergeant James Gers wants to show me how they test for it. One of the things we do, we come in here and we, we do a visual inspection and then we do a tap test. So it's all by sound, right? So I hear that pinging, metallic ping. Once you get to hear it, see how it sounds a little dull? Yeah. Right, and that sound, why does that sound different? Because the, the core is disbonded from the outer skin. So that's our damage. That's the technical piece of equipment. It's not yes, a stethoscope sir. or a magic camera, it's just... Not on tap too hard. You don't want to, you don't want to dent this. Criticize my technique? Oh, what, could I dent it? No, yeah. I see, I see, <laughs> I see, funny. So what happens, uh, moisture can get inside of there and it can end up disbonding. Okay, I'll catch up with it in the workshop later. I'll see if I can fix it for you. Perfect. You never know, I might. I hope so. I might, I might. An aircraft this big needs to be light enough to fly. And the secret to that is a lightweight honeycomb sandwiched between outer layers of fiberglass or aluminium. And engineers Jacob Willis and Justin Douglas have agreed to show me what this stuff looks like. Is it strong? Very strong. Here we have samples of it. So you have the aluminum core. Yeah. And then you would bond something as flimsy and light as fiberglass to it. Yeah. And then you end up with a, a rigid, strong but it's product. still light. I mean, that yeah. is, yeah, it's, it's strong as heck, but that's incredibly light. And obviously, although we're talking about a big plane for hauling big loads, if the plane weighs a lot, it can carry less. Yes. And how tough is this? Can oh, very, I mean, you could stand on it all day. Well, only, when you, only when you put the skin on it. No, 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 no. Well, like that. Try it right now, yeah. Right, that weighs nothing. <laughs> that's how much, well, I can't really stand on that because it will, really? Go right ahead. If I ruin it, is it expensive? No. And you haven't put any... Nope. There's no covering on it? Jump on it. Good. But it's only really, really, <laughs> really thin bits of aluminium. It's... Yeah, nothing. This is genius, because every pound off the plane's weight is another pound on the maximum cargo it can lift. I can feel it in my chest, the power it takes to get that into the air. But back in the 1960s, the Super Galaxy's original designers needed new supersized engines to get it airborne. But even on something that big, there's a limit to the size of engine it can carry. They needed to find a way of making those engines bigger without making them bigger. Hidden away here amongst thousands of acres of hills and forests in Peebles, Ohio, is the testing facility of General Electric, the company that developed and built the Super Galaxy's engines. Oh, wow. This is a specialised workshop. You can feel it. The air is crackling with precision in here. I'm here to meet Steve Scaver, one of the engineers responsible for designing and maintaining the big plane's jets. Is this actually off a of Super Galaxy? It is. Um, this engine's actually been on wing for over 12 years. So how long is this going to be in for what I suspect is quite an expensive service? We target 90 days. Yeah. Uh, I suspect it'll take longer. It but depends. that's our target. Depends what you find in there. Yes. OK, well, look, this is a jet engine. It is, to the layman, just a mass of pipes and tubes. It looks like the back of the most complicated washing machine ever. A regular jet engine mixes air and fuel in a combustion chamber and then propels the resulting exhaust out the back. That's what delivers thrust. But General Electric came up with a radical modification. They added a huge turbofan at the front, which drives more air at high speed into the combustion chamber, and crucially, even more air through a bypass chamber around the outside of it. Forcing air around as well as through the combustion chamber made these high bypass engines more powerful than ever before and revolutionized air travel. 
This is hauling in huge amounts of air. Correct, about 42 tons of air per minute. 42 tons of air 42 goes tons. pulled in through there. Yes. And I can see around the outside, that's where it doesn't all go into the engine. So this is the bypass bit. Correct, so for this particular engine, the ratio of air that bypasses the core mm -hmm. and exits through the fan is eight to one. Well, so eight parts out here to one in there. Yes. So the majority of the air is going around the engine and then exiting at the back Correct. with more mass to push you forward. Correct. Right. And this was a massively significant development in, in aviation engines. It's uh, virtually the configuration that's on every commercial aircraft today. So I think there's a figure that at any given moment, there's something like one and a quarter million people in the air that's, on commercial that's, flights. That's and nearly right. all of them being powered by engines well, at this time. That's correct. So it, it moves the world. Yes. Before any jet engine goes into service, it has to be rigorously tested. But they're so powerful, that can only happen in enormous buildings constructed to withstand the colossal forces involved. This is one of the most specialised rooms I've ever been in. It is only for testing jet engines. I'm trying hard to avoid saying awesome, but I can't. It's awesome. Look at that! Probably this isn't the best place to be when it starts. So I'm making my excuses and heading to meet Michael Giordano in the control room. So what do you actually do to try and test these engines to the limit? We closely monitor, you know, uh, fan speed, core speed, DGT, fuel pressure, um, and our thrust. How do they test? They test to 57,000 pounds of thrust. 57,000 pounds? Correct. The high bypass innovation was revolutionary. It delivered all the thrust the plane needed without adding any weight. 